At first glance, it looks like we're at about 10 pounds PSI here, but actually it's a little more than that. If you look closely, you'll see the, the needle is just under one atmosphere. One atmosphere would be about 15 pounds PSI. So we're probably 13, 14 pounds PSI. And uh, yeah, and uh, you're going to be seeing this along with me. This is not a reenactment here. Um, I'm not sure at this point if tightening the cap down over the nozzle a little tighter is going to solve the problem. And uh, well, you're just going to have to wait and see, just like I did. And if you want to use the fast forward uh, button because this is going to be long and boring, well, go for it. <laughs> I don't blame you one bit. Okay, as you can readily see, tightening down the cap solved the problem. I may have even been able to have it work with less pressure. Maybe I'll try it next time. I'll try it at 10 pounds next time. Anyway, let's leave well enough alone here. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of a heads up here. At about the seven and a half minute mark or so in this video, I find a problem and I have to stop spraying. I gotta tell you here, trying to spray light gray onto a light gray part is kind of, well, it's hard to see. Uh, well, there's a bit of good news. I guess if you can't see it, it nobody's going to notice, right? Wrong. Where the plastic is going to show through, it's going to look kind of glossy there, whereas the paint is going to be flat. Somebody had made the suggestion that what I should do is paint the deck first and then I could mask that off and then paint the rest of it. Uh, in other words, it would be easier to mask off the deck than it would be to mask off the sides, uh, especially on the inside here. Yeah, that would have been a good idea, but as you can see, it's too late now. 
However, I was planning on using a brush and trying to paint the deck with a brush. I know it's not going to be as good, but I'm hoping it's going to be all right. And now is when I think I see what is possibly a problem. Now this is my very unprofessional and rather inexperienced advice. Whenever you're through spraying, immediately begin to clean your airbrush out. Don't let any paint get dried up in there because it's a lot easier to flush it out when it's still, uh, you might say, liquidy. Once it dries, then it has, to be, it has to be dissolved and, well, you know what I'm trying to say here. Anyway, once again, this is my unprofessional opinion. I've spent the last 20 minutes or so cleaning out the airbrush. I wouldn't have been able to leave the paint in it that long, I don't think. I have to wait for those parts to dry so that I can do a little bit of fixing the problem. And, as you may have noticed, the problem was the flashing on the top of that one piece there. Yeah, once the uh, flat paint hit it and started to dry a little bit, you know, that flashing just sort of jumped right out at us. It's really obvious then. Yeah, I should have dealt with that earlier. But, I guess I was in such a hurry to start spraying that I didn't check things over the way I should have. So, I was looking at my own video there and I was thinking, all of a sudden, do, you don't suppose that's supposed to be there. Maybe it's supposed to represent a weld or something. And uh, because it goes down here, and it, it also goes down here. So I thought, well, we'll check the book. So I went to this drawing here, if you remember this one. And I don't really see anything there. Okay, so this is, this is March of 41. However, there's a more updated drawing. I'll show you. Here we are, two months later, where they've obviously added something to the top of it here. 
And I do remember seeing a photograph somewhere of some guys standing on something, standing on this thing, and it looked like they were standing on some sort of decking. So, you know what, I think I'm just going to leave it. Because now that I look at it again, it doesn't really look like flashing. It looks like it's supposed to be there. Uh, I can't see anything on this picture from August of 40. But here we jump ahead um, about almost a year and we got this. So uh, I'm just going to leave it. Not because I'm too lazy to, to file this off, but because I think it's supposed to be there. And if it isn't, we're going to say it's supposed to be there. A fair amount of time has passed here now. And I'm thinking, as long as I'm going to spray again, let's see if possibly I can spray it 10 pounds. Uh, yeah, I think it used to be 4. And uh, one change I did do was I was thinking that possibly this was getting a little on the thick side. So I added a few drops of thinner and I've just shaken it up here. So I know it's not really a really good test because the experience I've had with this thing is that uh, the thinner the paint the easier it sprays so like I say it's not a really good accurate test but anyway I'm just gonna take it down here to uh, uh, just 10 pounds. Now I know you're not gonna be able to see it real good but I can see it real good. It Okay, that, that says 10 pounds when the air is passing through. Now this may not be accurate. it up to 13 pounds again like it was before. That's disappointing. shouldn't have to have this very tight. It's fairly snug already. I don't know how many inch pounds, but... Okay, I'm going to boost it up to about 20. I'm not even going to try and spray this part. I'm going to take it apart again and see what's wrong here. Yeah. 
I don't know. I thought I had the problem licked. Must be doing something wrong. I had to boost it up to about 30 pounds there to get it to start. Then as soon as I backed it off down, it quit. Try it one more time. Boost it up to about 30 pounds. So it starts. Yeah, it's back down to 20 pounds. 30 pounds. Well. not taken it apart yet. I'm just in the process of cleaning it out and I put some pure isopropyl in the cup and I'm down to 10 pounds and it's it's working good. You might say at 10 pounds, like you can see the isopropyl, it, it's it's slightly, uh, you know, it's, it's slightly grayed because it's, you know, there was a little bit of residue in there. But uh, it's extremely thin. It's probably like about uh, 99 parts of isopropyl to one part of the, the paint. Now that was 10 pounds. Okay, now we're back up to one atmosphere, like 15. Well, I don't know, maybe I should pour the paint back in and give it another try. I'll just run this through and get rid of it. Okay, that's it. Let's reduce it down. Okay, that's 10. Let's see what we've got now. Look to about 12 now. Okay, it seems to be working okay at 12. I don't know what happened there before. It, it couldn't have been clogged because it was just freshly clean, so... And I guess it's just temperamental. Okay, let's just leave well enough alone here. This is not going to be one of those how to put an airbrush back together type things. Just want to show you I take it all apart. The only thing that I do not take completely apart is the air valve. I don't think I need to. I don't get any isopropyl down in there and if I do it gets blown out. Yeah, I clean all the parts, especially the nozzle 
and this this uh, cap here that has the three little holes in it make sure that there's nothing you know clogged there um, and then of course I I use this brush and I, I clean inside the uh, where the needle slides and I make sure that the uh, needle is completely cleaned off and as I mentioned before I, I use four different baths uh, well three for sure isopropyl and then uh, a, a two different uh, uh, baths of uh, testers uh, some kind of cleaner solvent paint thinner type stuff anyway it's it's pretty strong and it seems to do a really good job this one I, I put in it's a little bit cloudy you'll see um, you know I'll wash the parts in this after I've washed them in this and uh, then w what I will do is from there I will go into this one which is clear and and each time I blow it out with compressed air each part I blow it out with compressed air uh, and then this this little piece here the nozzle I'll clean it out with a little paintbrush uh, because it, it could get paint hardened in there paint does actually pass through here whereas this piece here paint doesn't or at least shouldn't pass through it this only has it's an air jacket and it uh, squeezes air around this nozzle and shoots it out the front there and it acts sort of like a venturi and it uh, sucks the uh, paint out of the nozzle because it's just a gravity feed it's not under pressure oh and that, that's why it's important I guess that you have this cap on tight because it has to seal at this end and also this end this end has to be pushed tight up against the body now what was happening there why did it not work at first and then when I didn't do anything to it except run isopropyl through it, it worked again. Did it have some sort of a weird uh, 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 airlock? Uh, I, I don't know. All I know is that it worked perfectly the second time. I think we even got it down to working at 10 pounds, didn't we? Anyway, let me get this thing back together and get it ready for the next time. Okay, thanks for watching. And all being well, we'll see you tomorrow with episode number 147.